Hey YouTube, so this tree is one that we did end weight reduction pruning on and beautified and it's in good shape and they're just tired of all the spiky balls. You know what I'm talking about? Spiky balls. They're like, kind of like the Corona thing, only not in your lungs. Instead all over your yard. You can see the end weight cuts, how they're healing up. Damien did a nice job on this tree. I think we might've used the bucket truck for this. I'm sure we ran out of room and had to go up there. So this tree represents a change in style for me years ago. I for sure, and even now I'm tempted to just one piece this thing, just flop the whole thing right out here in the road. Cause I could make it fit. I just asked them to move and I'd flop that thing out here and then everyone would swarm over it. The problem is those spiky balls would just be everywhere. And there would be maybe some Joe poking onto the grass. And then there'd be skid steer traffic on the grass. And uh, I suppose there could be something underground in the way of irrigation or something that could we'd have to watch for. So now we roll up with the crane and set it down gently in pieces and put it in the chipper. I just wish that we had the big X-19 chipper here today, but it's, it's throwing a red code. It's not wanting to work. It's a beast when it works, but it's been throwing some codes lately. And um, we haven't had the benefit of it for a while now. And I'd like a big chipper to chip this. Well, there's sprinklers on the edge. Right? Oh, okay. Right there. Them sprinklers on the edge, Damien. Yeah, the, there's there's one right there in the corner, uh, right behind, uh, right there in the corner, and then there's one right. There's a couple right in here. Okay. Right okay. They're in the weeds in there, but they work. So. Well, that makes the crane good then, because we won't be bombing the yard with big heavy things. Yeah. You want to say hi to my camera? No. No. <laughs> She's honest. <laughs> this is our this is our beloved client today. She don't want to say hi, but <laughs> thanks for the work. You got a new acquisition. Where you get those? I've gone full Hanukkah. <laughs> I'm climbing DRT. Got my speed line straps, like a genuine Hanukkah. You got the OG original A Team Rion Rounds tether before it was switched to the spring loaded end. Another classic honey key move. Take everything off you don't need. Yeah. Throw it over there. Uh, definitely. Never go under the tree without a speed line strap. Oh. Ever. That's a El Sasser maneuver. I think that one needs to be tighter. I go into the tree without stuff all the time. You got the. The uh, really deluxe like iPhone monkey beaver case. You see that my phone's in there too, so it's yeah. actually yeah. playing a part. He's ready to do it for the gram. It's not just for looks, YouTube. You got the suspenders. <laughs> I mean, it does look really cool, but it's not just for looks. Yeah. Yeah, I got the suspenders. I got my. Got the that. Rock X. I, uh, that what do they call that? An accessory beaner? Yeah, which I really like. These are rated for a ton. Like you could practically climb off one. Uh, even though we broke it says one not and for it, climbing. And it broke at about 1,800. Yeah. yeah. We're good. 1,800, yeah. we're good. <laughs> Don't do it. Because when it breaks, it looks like it broke easy. Yeah. Like the, the slack wasn't even out of the line. I mean, it registered. Maybe it wasn't 1,800. Maybe it was 18. Well, we'll just double I, I them up. I don't remember. Then. Don't, we'll don't hang on it. We'll <laughs> transition the gates so that they're opposite ways. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to try to hang off one one time. I don't think you should bring that little tiny saw. I think you should bring my 500i with a 28 inch bar <laughs> for that pick. Because this, this tree is a three pick tree. Okay, we went back to three pick. Yeah. Okay. I heard something else. Dumb. I heard something else very 
on a Hanukkah like a little bit ago. Hmm. And, and you gotta be done by noon to beat my time yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff is the current record holder for record ripping a tree apart with his bare hands fast. <laughs> by noon. Yeah, by well, noon. Thirty-five hundred dollar tree. Part by that time. <laughs> And then uh, I guess me and August can just leave. Because <laughs> then again. we're, yeah, sushi and stuff. Sushi. I'm over that. I, 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 I ate too much sushi. Yeah, I was, I felt tired yesterday. I took a nap. I was really close. I mean, I was, re I was way closer to taking a nap than I ever am. I took such a nap I that I stayed up till 2.30 in the morning editing Evan's last video, solo video. What do you two think about that? Uh, it, uh, the YouTube uh, algorithm says fewer people are watching this. That's mm. crazy. And I'm like, that's okay. I, I got. I thought it was pretty interesting. It was yeah. interesting, and I don't really do it for the algorithm. I do it for the actual people who watch it. The yeah, old timers. We have fun doing it, and the editing process is fun. I make videos for my mom. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I put one up on Instagram last night for your mom. Oh uh, yeah. Of Evan. Yeah. I don't know if she liked those song lyrics. You know what's funny though is sometimes I post I thought I stuff. heard a little... I'm not sure. I tried to make it unrecognizable. But... There I've was posted... something about a mother. I've posted a couple. And maybe a trucker. One guy... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the Canadian truckers that are going I've, on right I've now. I've posted axes before hoping Mike will see them. I hope Mike sees this one. <laughs> um... He's not on Instagram. I've long. posted nah. a couple before. Yeah, then, my mom shows him stuff though. It's funny because I've posted a couple before and like kind of just do it the way I want it to be done. And then your mom is commenting, commenting. She's never commented on the music before, but I she had to have been <laughs> thinking something. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, nice drop or nice something, drop. you know, or. <laughs> Something like that, and I'm like, we gotta have a company hope... party and bring her yeah. because she's part of it. She yeah. is. She's a big. She's part a of huge it. part of it, man. Yeah. She's a big part of it. And we kind of just, she kind of, we kind of keep her separate, but she ain't separate. She's like all up in it. Mm -hmm. We need to get your mom in a tree. <laughs> I already asked her. Hanging from the crane. Ball. You already asked her. I already did. I asked her. I'm a mom. Would your dad do it? Mom, YouTube gold, 80 year old grandma <laughs> tops tree for honey. Could you imagine? Oh. Could you imagine? Oh man. <laughs> well, we got something close to that. We got Evan up there. Yep. He's, He's kind of like close to an 80 year old grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we got Adam, too. I hope Evan doesn't yeah. watch all your videos. Just the yeah. ones with him in Evan, it. don't watch this So one. don't put him in this video. Yeah. So that way he doesn't I'll, watch I'll it. title it, Evan, don't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Evan, if you're watching right now, rewind and then turn it off. <laughs> Good one. Well, do you want to go up there? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I it's gave a super Jeff nice the day. yesterday. And this is a day for flying. I guess this one's mine. Damien bought these spurs actually this morning. Uh, on my way to the job site. Where, what was the ad? Where did you see the ad? Uh, I found them on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook. I was actually looking to see if there was any, like, aluminum spurs or anything on there. Because so I've been wanting to try out some new spurs. And uh, I saw this on there. This is a little Buckingham harness. And he wanted 150 bucks. And I said, well, how much do you want just for the spurs? And uh, he said... I told him I'd give him 50 bucks for the spurs because it only had one pad and stuff and <clears throat> he was missing a strap. So I told him I'd give him 50 bucks for the spurs and figure I couldn't go wrong. They're Buckingham spurs, straight gaff style. And this is really all I wanted was to try out the straight gaff style because August swears by them. And I've used his once, one the, other time, well, I think. And... These are shorter. So it might you might not feel much difference on your knee. Yeah, because there's di yeah they come out further. Mm -hmm. but. but the idea is that these newer style they're supposed to not bark up, fill with bark. This is a tight crotch right here that fills up with bark, and then later you don't get as much penetration into the big thick bark because you're barked up. And so and they also have a, a steeper angle the newer ones 
which they say keeps you from gaffing out as easy because this angle is 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 more straight in line than it is like this but i like the old ones uh you can't got you can't get them like this anymore you have to find an old one i like the old ones because they gaff out a little easier <laughs> and uh and they're easier on my knee because the angle, when the angle is out like this, it's more side pressure on the knee. So they are trying to keep everybody safe and they actually put more wear and tear on the knee. Now this one is worn down so much that this distance right here is probably close to the same. And those are Joe's old spurs that I bought from him right when I started climbing. But you got a much longer gaff, so if you were going into redwood bark or something you'd be happier with this than this mm -hmm. anyway Which, there's some thoughts on spurs old and new i'll probably be going into quite a bit of redwood bark here pretty soon yeah good i'm always climbing those big big trees like that you'll have to wear a mask yeah the bark dust is bad for you yeah but you and got was, a lot of masks i was, I was coughing on it <laughs> fly around a little bit just by myself I have to put a certain amount of time in solo it's uh, supposed to build my confidence or something like that but I'm always uh, kind of keyed up a little bit nervous when I'm flying still when it comes time to land at least well I'm headed there I just thought I'd touch base with the core the core subscribers that seem to always don't don't seem to mind listening to me uh, about just about anything and they've sort of forged a bond with me somehow <laughs> by being consistently an audience I know it's a little one-sided because I'm the one talking and I hear in the comments some and then I occasionally meet people and um, things happen <clears throat> I met Rion Rounds because of YouTube I've met a lot of people because of YouTube Reg coats, people like that. So, uh, but I just was comparing this. What I'm doing now is I'm flying a pattern, and the CFI, that is the certificated flight instructor, the, the guy who's teaching you how to fly, they teach you how to fly. If they didn't teach you, I, I'm, I'm sure I would crash. Like, if I just had to, like, suddenly get in a plane with knowing nothing and try to figure it out I'd, I'd crash maybe even crash even after a few lessons but what they teach you is that a good landing which is where a lot of crashes happen is on the landing and on the takeoff because that's where you're close to the ground but what they teach you is uh, setting up a good landing setting up a perfect landing setting up a decent landing starts in the pattern that you're flying and I was thinking, wow, that's like life. If you fly a good pattern, if you have good patterns, if you try to make the next right choice, and it's not always easy, you got difficult things coming at you, you know? You got wind and birds, and you got other traffic up there, and weather, and you got things, you got distractions, you got all these things that could take you away from flying a good pattern and maybe you could get a little wonky in your life by fixating on something that is not primary to flying life and uh, you get in a wonky pattern and what happens is you land in a bad place and so with flying when you fly a good pattern when you have what they call a stabilized approach when your head is kind of screwed on straight and you're you're keeping in the pattern uniform to where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be you keep making the next right choice you're flying ahead of the airplane they call it anyway that results in a good landing so when you have a good pattern you end up in a good place and you could take that and 
apply that to life, all the places we end up, you know, do you find yourself in a place, like, what am I doing at this place again, you know, a crack place where you've had a rough, you know, you arrived rough, I won't say a crash landing, a crash landing could be really bad, you know, that could be the end of you, that could, that could be the end, that's a bad place to, to end up, but you can also have a lot of rough landings by having a rough pattern by not having your head where it's supposed to be prior to the landing it ends up putting you in a rougher place when it's time to set down I just thought of that as I was going to fly this pattern flying the pattern around the air traffic controlled airport you have an air traffic controller and he's kind of like this guy that sees everyone at the same time he knows where the traffic is and what they're doing. Not everybody up there has a radio or a transponder that tells them who they are. But he knows if there's air traffic and he'll be there to help anyone who will listen. Anyone who's communicating with him, he'll communicate with. And he'll communicate with you if you have the potential for communication even if you don't open up the conversation because he's trying to keep you safe with everybody else that's up there and so I thought that worked for a life analogy too you have the ATC air traffic controller or in my the way I would think of it is like the almighty the almighty traffic controller he'll work with you to try to get everyone to arrive safely in the same place and you know you're a mighty up there with with your potential for destruction and and things you could inflict from up above full of fuel and, and, and you know you don't want to crash into anybody there's a lot of people under you that that are just going about their business and not looking up so listen to the ATC I think is what I was pondering as I was driving along here listen to the ATC as you go through life and they help you fly the perfect pattern and you communicate with them at key points in the pattern and then you listen for them when they call your number, when they call your tail sign, when they reach out to you, when you get the message in some way, whether it's through the collective conscience of uh, wise friends or whether it's from the good book itself or whether it's from a source of objective wisdom outside of your own fixation in the moment. You know how life is, you can get fixated and start flying wonky in life and sometimes the objective wisdom of a friend it could be just objective wisdom hey buddy let me tell you something I have experience with this and this or whatever I'm just saying that's the ATC that's helping you fly a better pattern and I hope this I mean it might it might trigger somebody who thinks it sounds too preachy but hey Jeff, that one going out that way Jeff likes it when we point branches out to him. I don't want to offend anyone, so I kind of dance around a little bit when I'm on a subject like this. But wow, it works for me to think like this and to try to fly right by listening to the almighty traffic controller and by trying to fly a good pattern so that I arrive in a good place. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with you in the airplane today. Uh, whoever will listen, I'm just kind of enjoying life right now and trying to share it with you and I feel like I've got kind of a bond with a lot of the core subscribers that have been around in the comment section for a long time and some I've bonded friendships where I I'm you know have come to know and meet and work with people through YouTube so many things have happened salt in that and maybe 
reduce the sprouts, speed up the decomp. Was that too much work for one day? Uh, it was just right. I got something for you. Just the right amount. <laughs> That's not gonna show up. Thanks, <laughs> my chip. <laughs> there you go, it's reformatted. Yeah, I'm sure that everything works good after being crunched <laughs> around. <laughs> At uh, least I know there's no good footage on it anymore. No, and it's a little, it'll stick in the camera better now that it has pitch on it. What are those? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the, the, these call my sandals. You seen that one? Uh-uh. This little kid. Maybe we get some of this prime footage. What are you doing, Zop? Just don't do the uh, footage behind the chipper. Okay, we won't. It's kind of a strange shape from it. That is kind of a strange shape. Like, it, it, it doesn't look like it's the same car. Yeah. Like, that looks like some sort of the rear end of, like, from the door back, it looks like the rear end of, like, a, a Ford, um, Ford Excursion. Or, a, uh... The only one like it I've seen. I'm sure that guy got fired from the company after. Yeah, I don't like how the back door droops. It's like, it's old school, and then they put one new school Tesla door on the back or something. Oh, and it's a Nissan. Huh. That explains everything. Yeah. All right, well, YouTube. Have a good day. We're out of here. Yeah, have a good day, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Sorry, I got a phone call there and I had to cut out, but I think the point I was getting to in my summary was let's go fly the pattern and land in a good place. Now we're going to go out there and see what they say. They're probably going to say left traffic, make left traffic is what I expect. But I'll do whatever they say. I'm going to be a real good listener today. God bless it. 383 to Quebec, Medford Tower, make left traffic, runway 32, clear for takeoff. 32, clear for takeoff, left traffic, 33 Quebec. 65, rotate. Medford Tower, Cessna 383 through Quebec, midfield, downwind. Cessna 383 Quebec, extend downwind, I'll call you base. Extending downwind, wait for base, 33 Quebec. Good to listen, it's very good to listen. Cessna 33 Quebec, base turn at your discretion, runway 32, clear to land. Runway 32, clear to land, going to turn base in a second here, 33 Quebec. Throttling back, carb heat's coming on, first notch of flaps. Go ahead and turn the base here, over this field, football field down here. Ooh. Wind is shoving me around. It's kind of scary for a new guy. Breathe deep. Go last notch of flaps. Trying to hold the nose for 70 here. There's a bird right off to my right. Very close to me it was. MF4 Tower, good, uh, good evening. Fletcher 562, uh, Fisher runway 32. Fletcher 562, Bedford Tower, runway 32, Cleveland. So if I hadn't moved that balloon out with throttle, that would have been a hard landing. God help me land this thing smoother. It's just a machine. I should be able to roll this thing better. Boy, all you. All you new arborist chainsaw guys, climbing trees with gear, trusting your gear, running a saw up there. Man, I feel for you. Because it's been so long since I was new, I just take it for granted. That's like my environment. I'm happy there. And I get people asking me all these questions, you know, how do you get your rope in the tree and the same old questions. And I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm impatient with them. And it's just, 
I just, I really deserve this right now. I deserve to be a noob at something and, and stress out and fight it. Ugh. Because I am, I'm developing a lot more patience for my arborist friends out there that are young and new and it's making me a better teacher to, to be floundering around at something. Something really important to, to do right. Must be part of the plan. Part of the ATC plan is to is to grow. Probably supposed to teach, or I'm supposed to inspire. I believe in some way, encourage people. Oh, it's super important to to live through stuff like this, though, right? Boy, oh boy. Or take off. Elevator trim is good. Flaps are set to uh, normal. Let's get the throttle where it should be. Probes back on. Carb heat's cold. Mixture is going to go full rich. Thank you for checklists. That's checklists. That's a bit of a good thing to have for teaching Arbor stuff. Metro Tower, Cessna 383, three, Quebec, holding short of, of 32 at Alpha 1 for closed traffic. Cessna 383, three, three, Quebec, Metro Tower, hold short runway 32. Holding short runway 32, 33, three, Quebec. This says lift off at 60, but my CFI has me lift off at 65. It's probably a little smoother. I've lifted off at 75 and thought it was pretty smooth. Oh, now I know why I was holding short. A jet. Okay, good to listen. I'll be looking for oil pressure in the green and airspeed in a minute. 3833 Quebec, make left close traffic, runway 32 cleared for takeoff, wind light and variable right now. And actually it's uh, picked up a bit, 26010, 26010. 32 cleared for takeoff, left traffic, thank you, 32 Quebec. Airspeed's coming alive, rotate. Crab in the runway. For 3498 meant for ground, clear to Los Angeles Airport as filed, Jackson 1 departure, maintain 1-1000. Expect flight level 310 within five minutes. Departure frequency cascade 124.3, squawk 1632. Can you say uh, wind direction again one more time, please? 3-3, three, Quebec. Three, wind 29010, 2 at 10. All right, thank you. Three, three, Quebec. That's not a big crosswind. It is a crosswind, though. Slightly. November 2-2, two, two, Juliet Golf. Left turn out approved at your discretion. Proceed on course. Uh, left turn out approved for 2-2, two, two, Juliet Golf. Thank you. Got a sink there. Not bad, considering who I am. A little bit of a crosswind. <laughs> I had to smooth out a balloon again with the throttle there. Cessna 3833 Quebec, turn left Alpha 3, then runway 32, taxi V Alpha, remain this frequency. Uh, roger that, left Alpha 3, taxi 32 via Alpha, remain this three frequency, 33 three Quebec. Remain this frequency. <laughs> oh, I get tongue tied. Bit nervous, probably, landing in the. Light crosswind. I can do this though. I can do it. Flaps up. Carb heat in. Yeah, if I hadn't moved out that balloon with this throttle, I'd have bumped down a little hard, I think. I, I kept my approach pretty good with the controls. Yeah, fighting to keep the nose straight uh, in the wind and kind of dipping the wing into the wind just a little bit. All of that is what I'm supposed to do. And then I heard it come down uh, 
one wheel, then the next. So that is technically right for a crosswind. I'll review that tape later and see how right it was. Good practice. A little bit of wind. Not everywhere has a little bit of wind. Some places have a lot of wind and good to get some wind practice. November 2-2, two, two, Lake Off, you've left the Delta frequency change for a good day, sir. RP10. k back, Med for tower, make left close traffic, runway 32, cleared for takeoff, sir. Runway 32, cleared for takeoff, left close traffic. Thank you. 33 Quebec. Oil pressure's in the green. Airspeed's coming alive. Wow. What the heck? The wind was was pushing my uh, my wingtip down. I don't like that. So I, w I should have been holding left aileron. Oh, that rattled me, and I went to 30 or 2,400 feet. Um, Medford Tower Horizon Air 2122. Uh, we're just coming up on talent for 32. Horizon 2122, Medford Tower Roger, number two, follow us, not a mile final. Okay, we're number two behind the Cessna Horizon Air 2122. Cub 226 Tango, when you're comfortable, enter right traffic, runway 32, report midfield. Right, uh, downwind for 3-2, report midfield, 2-6 Second notch of flaps, putting them in a little bit late. Cessna 3833 Quebec, go around, track to the right side of the runway. Going around, tracking to the right, 3-3 three, three, Quebec. Inflight 1977, Medford Tower, runway 32, cleared for takeoff, Jackson 1 departure, traffic to dash 8 on an 8 mile final. Cessna heading to your right, he'll stay east of your uh, departure corridor and he'll enter right traffic. All right, copy that. Uh, runway 32, clear for takeoff, Jackson 1 departure, ramp by 1977. We got that, Cessna traffic is Cessna 3833 Quebec, start a right turn for the right crosswind, runway 32. If you could start the turn now, please. Starting right turn for uh, right crosswind, 33 Quebec. Three, three, Quebec. Thanks for the go around the help. I had an IFR release to get out. I only have two minutes to get them out once they give me the release or else I'm in trouble. Appreciate that. My pleasure. 3-3, three, three, Quebec. Cub 26 Tango, make a left 360. 360, 26 Tango. 3833 Quebec, continue on the downwind. You'll follow a dash 8 coming up on the manor. Continuing downwind, uh, looking over at the manor, 33 Quebec. Lancer 4537 Tango, you've left the Delta. Change to advise your approved. Have a good day, sir. Okay, change to 1437 Fox. We have the traffic on, on final. Airplane 1977, contact Cascade Departure. Make it a good day. Over to Departure, Airplane 1977. See ya. Tower Horizon Air 2122, can you uh, verify the clearance? Horizon 2122, thanks for the reminder. Runway 32, clear to line. I do have traffic 1 o'clock, 1 mile southeast bound. It's a five, or correction, a Cessna to follow you. Uh, clear to land at runway 32. We're looking for the Cessna Horizon Air 2122. Cessna 3833, Quebec. Your traffic's just ahead and to your right, showing a light. Traffic in sight, 33 Quebec. Cessna 3833, Quebec. Thank you, sir. Number two, follow that traffic. Runway 32, clear to land. Runway 32, clear to land. Number two, follow that traffic. 33 Quebec. Cub 26 Tango, you can bring it in. You're following a Cessna. He'll be about three miles southeast on our right base. It should work out just fine. Uh, turning right down went for 32. This is Tango. Number three. Cub 26 Tango, your traffic's a Cessna. He's on a two mile final. Continue on the downwind. Report him in sight. Traffic, continue on downwind. 26 Tango. Cub 216, your traffic's just off your right side, runway 32, clear to land, sir. Clear to land, on 32, 
Not good. It's got a 3498. Okay, now give it a shot. Cessna 383, go back, turn left Alpha 3, then runway 32, taxi Alpha. Turn left Alpha 3, taxi 32 via Alpha 33, go back. I think I'm on head back to Millionaire, 33 Quebec. Cessna 3833 Quebec, very well. Turn left on Alpha, right on Bravo, taxi ramp, we'll see it. All right, thank you. Left on uh, Alpha, right on Bravo, 33 Quebec. Bedford Tower, Troy 007 is inbound on the uh, RNAV Delta. Troy 007, Medford Tower, runway 32, clear to land 127015, Medford altimeter 3038. 3038, clear to land on uh, 32, Troy 007. Oh, I got a lot to learn, people, a lot. So the crosswind component went up a little bit to uh, 15 miles per hour, per hour at the end there. It was started out at 7, then it went to 10, then it went to 15, and I came back because I'm only allowed a 10 uh, component. Now, if the wind was blowing straight down the runway, it would have been different, but it wasn't. So I was getting pushed around a little bit, and uh, I need more instruction on that before I go willy-nilly flying around in that, I think. The last landing was <laughs> not pretty. The guy told me crosswind landings, you're not looking for a perfect landing, you're looking for a ba doom boom like that. That's what the CFI says. But I'm sure he can do it better than me. That was very good learning time though, because it was me. It's very memorable if it's just you trying to figure something out. <laughs>